Hi guys, I'm Luis of IT Warehouse. We're the sole distributor of RF Elements here in the Philippines. And aside from RF Elements, we carry other brands like Microtik, Ubiquiti, Deepening, Compass, and many others. You can talk to us on our Facebook page and our Lazada and Shopee stores. I'll link it somewhere here. Now, uh, everyone likes the value for money, also known as bound for your buck. And that's one of the main reasons why we believe in RF Elements, why we applied for a distributorship for their items. A lot of products from a lot of other brands work, yes, but uh, RF Elements products, they offer so much more. You get so much more in the long term. Uh, you get reliability, co-location, customizability, and durability. Uh, all these characteristics you can put into one word, which is future proof. Now, I'm sure you'll learn all about this later, but uh, I guess my point is this. As business people and as humans, we have the responsibility to look as far forward into the future as we can. And right now, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, there's a problem with RF toys, with uh, spectrum, with reliability and all of that. And it will only get worse. RF elements helps prevent that. Now, uh, enjoy the webinar and I hope we'll all learn something today. I hope that you find the value in RF elements like we at IIT Warehouse do. Now, some words from my fellow Filipinos. Uh, hi, guys. Salamat sa pag-attend. Enjoy lang. And syempre, huwag kayong may yung magtanong sa Q&A. Tapos, uh, join pala kayong guys sa Facebook group natin, uh, RF Elements Asia at saka RF Elements Philippines. Nandun na sila, Jorge, yung speaker natin ngayon, saka yung iba pang mga tig RF Elements sa Slovakia. Tapos, shout out din sa Trident Networks of Google, check me sila guys. And that's all. Uh, again, enjoy and thank you. All right. So uh, thank you. The ones who confirm uh, that the presentation is properly uh, shared with you on your screen. And uh, I once again thank everyone who joined us uh, today. So first of all, as you're seeing here on the screen, my name is uh, Jorge. Uh, I am Product Manager at RF Elements and uh, today we will be uh, presenting a very interesting uh, topic about noise uh, reaction, uh, basically uh, how we deal with this, what is our approach, how um, you can make your uh, WISP uh, thrive, your WISP grow with RF Elements antennas by uh, rejecting noise. So, uh, without further delay, once again, good morning to the people who are joining and thank you very much for being with us today. So, let's uh, commence with uh, the first slide of this uh, of today's uh, presentation. So, at our filaments, uh, we uh, have a main goal, which is to help the WISP uh, grow or thrive uh, by uh, enable, uh, enabling them to run stable and fast wireless networks through our noise rejection technology with uh, near zero loss radio connection. Uh, the noise rejection is a stepping stone towards massive scalability of wireless networks provided by our wide range of antennas. Uh, I'm very sure that you have seen uh, this kind of spectrum analysis perhaps in your local uh, deployment areas. Therefore, uh, the number one challenge that WISPs are facing today is the that of uh, RF noise uh, in the unlicensed, unlicensed spectrum, right? So WISPs uh, commonly see spectral graphs with high to very high noise floor that prevents the wireless networks from optimal functioning and sometimes even to the point of giving up on the unlicensed spectrum and the business altogether. As we know, the spectrum is quite limited uh, and therefore uh, should be preserved as one of the most valuable resources in unlicensed WISP networks. The main cause of the spectrum congestion uh, is the huge amount of wireless devices deployed uh, the very advantage of these unlicensed frequency bands became one of its uh, main downsides. And on top of that, these devices are based on technology directly adopted from other industries, which is unfortunate because the Pacharai antennas are completely unsuitable for 
WISP unlicensed networks. So the main issue here uh, is the antenna side lobes, which are almost never mentioned when talking about antennas. Uh, people usually talk about gain, they talk about being with, and perhaps even front, front to back ratio, right? As parameters commonly discussed. But people don't usually speak about the side lobes, which are the root cause of the problems with noise in unlicensed WISP networks. Take, for example, this case, right? Uh, omnidirectional antenna. This is an antenna that it radiates equally in all directions in the azimuth plane and nothing in the vertical directions, making the radiation pattern kind of like a donut, right? So omnis are the least suitable antennas in unlicensed bands since they spread the signal everywhere and receive it from anywhere. So uh, basically it's a full 360 degrees circle. Now for the vast majority of scenarios uh, the WISPs deal with is probably the worst antenna since it pollutes the spectrum in every direction and makes any network extremely sensitive to any noise sources in the area, right? Now, uh, patch array antennas uh, cover a sector, right? A slice, let's say this way, of this whole azimuth, azimuth uh, circle of the 300, uh, of the omnidirectional antenna. So a typical radiation pattern of a patch array, our antenna looks like the one you're seeing your screen. Nevertheless, uh, their side lobes, despite being quite a bit smaller than the main lobe, they still cause problems with the noise. And on top of that, the size of the side lobes uh, and therefore the performance of, of the antenna uh, changes with the frequency, which is extremely undesirable feature, right? The frequency dependence of the radiation pattern causes the RF radio will see different spectrum, so you cannot reliably trust that you'll see the same performance when you switch the channel. This makes these kind of antennas or the networks that are based on uh, patch array antennas like a house of cards uh, because even the slightest change can throw the whole network off making your life quite difficult. These antennas are uh, commonly used for point-to-point -point deployments. They also have many side lobes as you can see in the animation. The physics of these antennas dictate that you cannot fully avoid the side lobes uh, so the result is of, of having one of these antennas uh, is basically the same as with a patch array sectors, right? Huge amount of silos. And these silos, they collect and transmit noise from unwanted directions, eventually showing up as a slow network, leaving you scratching your head wondering what is the promised, let's say, a gigabit throughput that the radio manufacturer declares on their data sheet. The problem with side loops uh, causing high noise levels in WISP networks multiplies when we introduce more sectors, right? So the side loops of the neighboring sectors interact with each other, and despite all devices on a tower might be your own devices, uh, and let's not even count the potential competitive WISP networks. So despite all of these devices can be yours, the interference problems keep growing until you hit a limit where adding even more or even one more sector can make the whole network completely dysfunctional. The same is valid for, for backhaul links, regardless if you use a dish antennas or a directional patch array antenna. The side lobes of these antennas, uh, that the side lobes they have, are uh, inevitably uh, will lead to consistent degradation of the wireless network throughput and even more in the case of unlicensed 5 gigahertz networks where your competitors use the same antennas or the same type of antennas as you. So what is the solution then? Well, let's use, right, uh, antennas without side loops and uh, the, beam, uh, beef, the beam width that we need fitting the coverage scenario is the true solution to the problem of interference because when you don't collect the noise, you don't have to deal with it. And if you only cover the area necessary, you're doing the best thing you can do for your customer's satisfaction. So let's take this example one more time. If you replace even one patch array sector 
with a horn antenna, you will see how horns really work, right? You will see significant change in the performance. Not only the horn sectors will perform very well, but also the pacharai sectors or the remaining pacharai sectors will improve. And this is counterintuitive and sometimes confusing thing about horns, right? Uh, they provide better performance because they lack something. And in this case, they lack side lobes. But we can go even further, taking the same example, and let's replace the whole network with horns. Uh, because the biggest gains uh, of the total network throughput and stability are visible when all patch arrays are removed and are replaced by horn sectors, right? So if we remove all the patch arrays, we remove all sources of noise. So we will stop worrying every day about, for example, let's, let's not touch anything so that the network doesn't crash and switch to, wow, I have little to no noise and I can still keep adding customers with no problem. This is a real possibility within, the, within your reach with the horn antennas. Taking the point-to-point -point example, uh, replacing also the dish antenna with a highly directional horn antenna in high nose areas, the overall throughput will increase and you'll introduce huge stability to the network. The modulation rates will not only be high, but they will also be consistent. So, horn-based point-to-point links are very stable. That is how the horn antennas work, unlike the traditional patch array sectors or ditches. Now, the real magic here happens when we only use horns in our point-to-point -point links, this case, right? So no silos equals no noise equals maximum performance, right? And also happens that sometimes uh, the WISPs who, are, uh, who start to use horns are very happy with, with them and they want to keep this to themselves, right? They don't want to share the, what they found out that works for them uh, because they think that this is an advantage over their competitors. Uh, the fact is, though, that if your competitors also use horns as well, it will be good for you because the less noise everyone generates, overall result is the better, right? If you wonder how, you know, we can install the, the horns, how densely horns can be installed in one tower, we believe that these pictures speak out, right? Uh, basically, it's many many sectors coexisting on one tower and with excellent and stable performance at the same time, right? Which is very unbelievable because with horns, this is a daily reality. And, and please take into consideration that these pictures are from our customers. They're not our own pictures, right? Now, horns are the toolset that allows you to respond and adjust your network to any situation optimally, right? So on the left side, and on the right side, you can see a group of uh, ultra horns antennas, right? They are covering distant, narrow sectors with 15 degrees beam width. And each antenna is covering one sector uh, in a specific area. So in the middle, we can see a cluster of different beam width horns, right? So the versatility of scenarios you're able to cover with horns is practically unmatched. You can really... Uh, sense why we have seven different symmetrical and three different asymmetrical horns, right? Uh, plus uh, a high gain narrow beam, beam with ultra horn. Uh, basically, the variety of the gain allows you to plan your network depending on what you actually need, because every situation is asking for a specific tool, right? Every every zone or every area of deployment can be different from the other. So. For example, if we have a dense customer base close to the site, you know, a low gain horn should be used. If we have a group of customers clustered far from the site, well, then ultra horn will be the way to go because it has a high gain and a narrow beam. So for every uh, situation, you know, we have a, a, a tool for it. You have the, a variety of horns to choose from to deliver the customers quality service that they can rely and you don't have to constantly worry about. If you want to know more about uh, our 
basically all of our product portfolio or antennas, including the adapters uh, that you need to, to use with the radios, different radios for WISP networks. Please check the recording of our product introduction webinar on our YouTube channel uh, in the recorded webinars playlist. We have also a link calculator. Uh, this one you can use, you see how is the interface. You can plan your links, you can introduce all the data, the more accurate, the better. And you can basically see how the performance will look like. So we encourage everyone to please go ahead, enter our website, rflamans.com, go to the calculator, plan your link, see what expected results you can get. And that's a very good starting point uh, to you know consider before you even buy any of the products. Now, adjusting the transmission area, uh, WISPs commonly use the radio output power adjustment to control the coverage area. And in this way, they also control the amount of noise transmitted to any neighbor neighboring links, right? Which makes perfect sense and helps with the noise that a given link produces. But as you can see, Decreasing the output power of the radio does nothing to the noise received by the access point from other competitive links. And this is an important point to understand, right? That adjusting the radio output power will only get you limited improvement. To deal with the noise in a more efficient way, you need to adjust the reception area as well by using an antenna with lower gain. Doing that, uh, then well, the reception area basically shrinks, becomes smaller, which mitigates the noise the access point sees. And this is another strength of the horns, right? We offer as well uh, low gain horns as well as high gain horns. So you can react, right? And accommodate uh, to the surrounding interference situation uh, adequately and optimize the performance of your network. So far, uh, we have talked about, you know, an antenna have a lot of side lobes, doesn't have side lobes, or this kind of topic or terms, right? But this can sound rather vague. Uh, we might wonder, okay, you know, is there actually an antenna parameter that can give us a quantitative measure of the amount of side lobes an antenna have? Well, yes. And the answer is basically beam efficiency. Uh, beam efficiency is an antenna parameter that, again, quantifies the amount of silobes. So what is it? Well, beam efficiency is the ratio of the main lobe energy to the total energy an antenna radiates. So maximum beam efficiency you can achieve is 100%. In this case, it means the antenna has zero silobes, right? Uh, so 100% of the energy that the antenna is radiating, it's in the main lobe, which is, of course, what we want it to be. Now, the closer the beam efficiency to 0% is, the more silobes an antenna has. Practical example, here is a radiation pattern of a genetic parabolic dish. You can see the beam efficiency is 40%. This means that 40% of the energy is contained in the main lobe, and 60% of the energy is wasted and is going everywhere else. Uh, so basically, these are the silobes, right? With the beam efficiency, the comparison of antennas in terms of silo performance, you know, becomes extremely simple because the higher the number uh, wins, right? So Ultrahorn here, as you can see, has 99%, again, meaning 1% is wasted versus a uh, genetic parabolic dish antenna has 40% beam, which, uh, beam um, with, uh, right, beam efficiency, sorry. And uh, it means then that uh, the antenna is only using 40% of this energy in the main lobe and is wasting, which is side lobes, 60% of the energy, right? Which is in this case, a huge amount. In this case, 99% versus 40%, I mean, it's clear that the ultra horn is better antenna in terms of noise suppression and probably the best on the market. And here's an example of different antennas from the market. You can see uh, antennas that are used for uh, coverage, sector coverage in WISP networks. You can see basically are patch array antennas or horns. You can see that the values of the beam efficiency uh, are around 60%. Uh, 
course, it depends on the manufacturer and, and design quality. Now, uh, the thing to notice here is that the RF elements horns, uh, in this case, uh, both the symmetrical and asymmetrical have a beam efficiency around 90 to 95 percent. So you can compare basically all the horns in the market versus our horns. I guess the uh, basically is clear. And the king of all is uh, the ultra horn, which has 99 percent, right? That's the best antenna in terms of noise suppression in the market. Same goes for the point to point antennas. Uh, point to point antennas, uh, some of them also use the patch array design, right? Uh, we can see basically they are at the very bottom. Then we can see ultra dishes. Uh, you know, ultra dish here uh, behaves a little bit better. Uh, generally, the bigger the dish, the better the beam efficiency is. But again, it will depend on the uh, design and manufacturing quality. Again, notice the ultra horn is really. Uh, the best performing antenna on the market in terms of noise suppression it has 99% beam efficiency. Now, if you want to see all the uh, beam efficiency numbers or you know values for each of our antennas, you can download the data sheet in, of, in our website and you can see that this number is printed there, right? So uh, we encourage you to look at this if you really want to know. Now, there are three rules of successful noise rejection. First of all, use high beam efficiency antennas. Uh, you know, the higher the beam efficiency, the less the side lobes, the lower the noise floor, and eventually higher network throughput. Secondly, choose the right beam width and gain for the job. Uh, we offered a wide selection of horns uh, with different beam width, which makes it uh, very easy to pick and use the right antenna for the job, right? And the last one, adjust the gain of the access point antenna to the scenario, right? The adjustment of the radio output power has only very limited result. And uh, we also have a community, uh, RFE Lab. Uh, you can enter there and register. Uh, this forum is where you can ask anything about our antennas or perhaps you want to search through the questions that other people ask in the past. So anyways, you can register here for free. You can Here's the link, rflab.com, and we were looking forward to interacting with you. We have a YouTube channel called RF Elements. Inside of it, we have a playlist called Wisp Traveler, uh, where wisps like yourself talk about their experience with horns, like what problems they were facing, how horns helped them deal with these problems. So we have customers uh, from all over the world. So I encourage you to check out your fellow WISP, how they're using the horn antennas. Another playlist uh, in our YouTube channel is Inside Wireless. These are short educational videos about all kinds of topics from the world of RF engineering. So regardless if you are an RF veteran engineer or a complete beginner, these videos offer a great resource for anyone who wants to learn or perhaps refresh their RF engineering knowledge. Okay, guys, so uh, a quick note, well, you're seeing on the screen, uh, this is our local support for APAC, uh, Yudong, he's here with us. Uh, you can basically see his data, uh, phone number, right, and email. So uh, any project or uh, help, doubt, any assistance you need or you will need with our elements, please uh, feel free to, to reach to him and we will definitely provide an answer for anything you, you might want to ask. Uh, we have a presentation, uh, sorry, we have a question from, from Arbin. Arbin says if we can send the PDF file of this presentation, uh, we will share the recording after this webinar ends. We will prepare the recording and we will share it on our YouTube channel. So please just go there, subscribe to the channel so you get the notifications. And as soon as we upload the video, you will see it. So we, we invite you to, to definitely go there and, and check. Thank you everyone for attending this webinar on behalf of our followers and IT Warehouse. Uh, and uh, definitely please keep in touch and we will uh, support you in anything you might need. So once again, thank you. Have a wonderful day and uh, see you next time.